Hi everyone, I'm Jody, and welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today and welcome to Friday Face Off. One of the questions that I get the most between DMs on my Instagram or in the comment section of the videos, which always leave me comments, you guys. I love reading them, so thank you, thank you. And also subscribe, but you know, to do that, I mean, we all ask you to do that, so go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Anyway, one of the most common questions is about concealer for those of us with more mature eyes. Which concealers have good coverage? Which ones tend to crease the least? If there are any that crease, don't crease at all, we wanna know about that as well. Which ones don't accentuate fine lines and wrinkles? and overall are not drying for our more mature eyes. Well, last week's Friday Face Off, I paired off two of the most coveted, highly rated, most popular concealers, Drugstore Edition, the Maybelline versus the e.l.f. And both performed fairly well, especially for the price point. The e.l.f. I think performed a little bit better. Today, I'm gonna raise the bar just a little bit and we're gonna go against two concealers that are, I think it's like the Coke and Pepsi of the midpoint concealer world. And that is the NARS Radiant Cream Concealer, let me hold it up correctly, and the Hourglass Vanish Air Brush. So when you read the comments on these, many comments say they've used this for years and now they've switched this and this is their holy grail. Many people say this is their holy grail forever and they'll never do anything else. Other comments say, nope, I love the NARS, I will never try anything else. And so I wanted to know for myself, which one is really better for more mature skin? So we're gonna put both of these through a few days of wear. Now I always start my concealer with sunscreen and then a good moisturizer and I let it sit before I go in with the concealer. So in the essence of time, and if you've seen any of my Friday face offs before, you know the routine up to the application of the concealer and then we're gonna go into the concealer. We're gonna do a midday eight hour type check-in with powder. The second wear test is going to be applying these two concealers without a powder. Some people like to use powder, some people don't, so I think I've got you covered either way. Now, a few things to know about these concealers. The NARS is $32 for 0.22 ounces and comes in 30 shades. It's a medium coverage offering a radiant finish, 24 hour hydration and is crease resistant. It's also vegan. The hourglass is $36 for 0.2 ounces and comes in 22 shades. It is a full coverage, natural finish and also crease resistant. Both are vegan, the hourglass is cruelty free. Now the NARS offers 24 hour moisture wear as well as long wearing, blurring of fine lines and wrinkles where the hourglass marketing says that it is for all skin types, dry, oily, combination skin, and weightless as well as waterproof. So if you are liking these Friday face-offs, please hit that subscribe button as well as leave me some comments on what other products you would like to see in upcoming Friday face-offs. So if you are ready, let's get started with day one application with powder. All right, you guys, so as far as the marketing goes with this NARS Radiant Cream Concealer, let me grab mine because I am using vanilla. Is that right? Yeah, vanilla. It says that it is free of parabens, free of formaldehydes, free of formaldehyde releasing agents, which is good, free of mineral oil, free of oxybenzone, free of coal tar. Do we really have to ask that it's free of coal tar? I, I shouldn't, just shouldn't we assume that it always is? And it contains less than 1% synthetic fragrance. Let's test that. Yeah, no fragrance, and it's also vegan. In terms of a marketing perspective, it says that it has light diffusing mineral powder, blurs the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and helps even out skin tone, multi-active botanical blend, which is magnolia bark extract, grape seed extract, and vitamin E, hydrates, firms, reduces redness, and helps strengthen the skin barrier. Well, we hope all of that is accurate. All right. So it comes on a doe foot applicator. I have the color vanilla. And I think today I just am going to put it little tiny dots right where I have the most purple area. And I know younger YouTubers right now and TikTok people are saying to put it right in the inner corner and then right here and out. And that's absolutely fine if that's the only place that you need coverage. 
I have some purple areas underneath my eyes, not so much so that I need to use a color corrector, but enough that I wanna cover it with a concealer, and then that concealer is also a shade or two lighter than my foundation, so that just gives a little bit of brightness to that under eye area. If you wear glasses, that's something really important, is you wanna brighten that under eye area because the reflection of light through your lenses tends to darken this area anyway. And if you're already dark underneath your eyes, and then you add that lens and the reflector so you've got a little bit more shadow on that space, you definitely want to use a concealer that helps brighten. And in order to do that, you want to find one that is a few shades, about two shades lighter than your foundation. Both of these are water-based concealers, so they'll work fine with the water-based foundations that I have on today. So I also need to go up through here and a little goes a long way, so those are just very small dots. I wanna let it set up for just a second, and then the reviews have been mixed on this in terms of the best way to apply. Now, NARS suggests that this can be applied directly from the applicator, it can be applied with your fingertips, or it can be applied with their number 10 NARS Radiant Cream Concealer brush, which we're not gonna go purchase because we don't need another brush just for concealer. Uh, it says to use as a highlighter, select one to three shades lighter than your concealer shade and place on the high points of your face. And to add contour and dimension, apply the concealer in the hollows of the cheeks, on temples, and along the hairline and jawline. Now for those of us that are more mature as we lose volume through the temples, we don't wanna add darkness here because that makes it look more indented, more shaded, more hollow. We wanna use a little bit of brightness through here, which we may do with this if it works so well. I'm gonna actually use my fingertips to press this in. So we're just gonna see how well this covers. And it is still very blendable, I'd have to say, even though I let it set up for a second. It is moving, it, it is setting up. So I do wanna say that you're gonna move probably faster than I did, but it's still blending out smoothly. It is, I am able to move it around where I want it. And gosh, just early indication, look how well that covers. So that's nice. And if we can really get it to be crease resistant, that would be even nicer. And again, this one is $32 and comes in 30 shades, as I mentioned earlier. And that vanilla is a really nice color. It's one of the very lightest colors, if not the lightest color. And I use this one specifically in the winter time when I use a little bit lighter foundation color and that is really nice coverage. So now we wanna put a little bit of setting powder on it. I'm just taking the RCMA powder. I like to apply my powder with a medium size tapered brush, not damp, because to me it feels like once you apply something with a damp sponge or a damp brush or anything damp, once that dampness evaporates out, you're left with sort of almost, you know when you mix flour and water and you get dumplings? That's what I feel like it leaves and that creates more texture more hollows, more fine lines and wrinkles. The appearance of those fine line and wrinkles seem to be exaggerated. I just don't like to add that extra moisture, but if that's what works for you, then please, by all means, do that. I just like this taper brush because it fits very nicely and I use just the slightest bit of powder and set it. So that is how it works. I think it looks pretty good compared to the other side. I would say it's a nice medium coverage. It's probably more radiant before we set it with powder, which we'll know better tomorrow when we don't set it at all. It is buildable, it moves very smoothly, it's very easy to blend. I don't see where it's accentuating any fine lines and wrinkles at the onset of application. We won't know if it offers 24 hour hydration because I will not leave this on for 24 hours. We will check in at about the eight hour marks. Moving over to the Hourglass Vanish airbrush side, I have this in color Silk, Silk or Sun, Silk. And a little goes a long way from all the reviews that I've read. It is also a doe foot applicator. Hourglass suggests application is with directly on your skin with the applicator. However, they suggest that you blend with the Vanish Seamless Finish Concealer Brush, which is sold separately, which we will not be doing, or your finger or a beauty sponge. Concentrated formula requires just one to three dots under each eye. To conceal, select the shade that matches your natural skin tone. To highlight, select two shades lighter. Pro tip, this concealer range includes shades that can be used for color correcting. Well, that's good to know and it is full coverage so you could go with a color corrector if in fact you felt like you needed to do that and then use this as a highlighter and or a contour if you wanted to go darker. This says you use one to three dots. I'm gonna just use a little bit more but not very thick ones. The reviews on this said that a little, 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 little goes a long way. So we hope that that's the case because 
at $36, I would like this to last a really long time. And if it works, it's worth every cent. So we're gonna let that sit up for a second and go through what the marketing says about this concealer. It says that this crease resistant, light reflecting liquid concealer blends seamlessly into skin and diffuses the look of pores and fine lines. Awesome. The highly pigmented formula evens skin tone to conceal the appearance of dark circles, blemishes, and other imperfections for a smooth, natural, airbrushed finish. Well, that would be fantastic. So to treat it the same, we're going to go ahead and blend it. It seems to be, it's definitely a thicker formula. It probably doesn't need to set up quite as long because it dries pretty quickly. I feel like it's a little harder to move after just that short amount of set in time, which was what, maybe a minute than the NARS did. It's definitely a full coverage. I would say it's more of a matte finish than a natural finish. It feels a little thicker, a little heavier to me. And it does say it's full coverage, which doesn't mean it's thicker. It just means it's more highly pigmented. But I definitely feel like the, it, it doesn't blend as easy. It blends well. It just doesn't blend as easy as the NARS. Now the reviews on this one were all over the place. A few reviews that I read said they used to use the NARS Radiant was their holy grail for years and years. Then they switched to this Hourglass once they tried it and they'll never consider going back. Um, love this concealer. This is perfect when your under eyes are having a dry day, but you need coverage. Most concealers would get cakey and flake off, but this concealer truly comes in clutch with great coverage and moisture highly recommended. So. A lot of reviews said that, that it didn't, it wasn't a drying formula, it hydrated, it lasted a long time. So we shall see. What do you guys think? You can see that it's definitely more full coverage than the NARS. We could do a second coat on the NARS, but I don't really feel like I needed to. I didn't think I needed to until I saw what this one looks like. Now I'm kind of wondering, but that's okay. We're gonna just do one coat and see how they last so that we treat them fairly. Setting powder, just put it ever so lightly. So we will see what they look like in about eight hours. Remember, they are both vegan. They both say to be crease resistant. The hourglass is cruelty free. One's medium coverage, one's full coverage. Both are a natural radiant finish. And they both say that they blur the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. That would be awesome. So let's put these two to the test and I'll see you guys soon. Well, a quick update. These two concealers have been on for five hours. I am now outside, well, I'm in the car, but I am outside in more natural light. I have been out in a slight mist today. It's like a little bit of a rain, but it's so windy that it's almost horizontal. So if there was ever time to test if these are waterproof, I would have to say that was a darn good test. Um, so far holding up very well, both of them. So we will see how they last the rest of the day. All right, you guys, so we are here for our 12 and a half hour check-in. I am quite impressed with myself, actually. I applied both of these concealers at 8 a.m. this morning. It is now quarter to nine. So we're pushing 13 hours. That's pretty darn good for me. Uh, we'll see if I can get through this without sounding less than awake and alert. So here we go. Both concealers are still on, it looks like. We'll zoom you in. It looks as though the NARS has worn a little bit more than the Hourglass, which if you remember, this is the NARS, this is the Hourglass side. Um, there's definitely still wrinkles on both, but I don't feel as though either product has settled into or accentuated the lines and wrinkles that I've had. It does look as though the NARS has worn a little bit more because I feel like I'm a little bit dark or purpley under this area versus the Hourglass. It does not look like it's worn as much. And remember, it was a little bit more pigmented to start with because it claims to be full coverage versus medium coverage. If you remember from earlier, the NARS did look a little less coverage. So knowing that it started less and this one started with more coverage, I think they've worn about the same. So if you need a thicker wear or more full coverage to last the entire 12 hours, then your best bet might be the Hourglass where the NARS wore off again about the same. It just started with less coverage to begin with. So nothing negative about that at all. I think they both are holding up really well. They don't look shiny, that my eyes don't feel 
dehydrated. I'm really curious to see how these work tomorrow when there is no setting powder because if you remember the just like we saw last week with the Elf and Maybelline, they both performed well with the setting powder. It was the non-setting powder days that we saw a little bit of a break in their overall coverage and the length of time for which they lasted. Here's a picture of the Maybelline and the Elf at the eight hour mark and the NARS and the Hourglass at the 12 hour mark. And the difference being is that the NARS and Hourglass, this picture's four hours later than the Maybelline and Elf, but I think it's just, I mean, they're, you know, three times as much in the price. So I guess that's all fair. I just was curious to see the difference at the end of one day with setting powder between these concealers. Anyway, that is not this face off. This face off is NARS and Hourglass, but I was curious and I figured you guys might be as well. So pretty impressed with how these held up at the 12 hour mark. I can't speak to the 24 hour hydration that NARS claims to have. So next up will be an all day wear test without setting powder. Hi guys, all right, welcome back to day two of our little experiment. And today we're gonna do things a little bit, I shouldn't say different, but in addition to, and here's what I mean by that. Not only do I have my sunscreen and my moisturizer underneath my eyes, and then we're gonna apply the concealer without powder today, I'm also gonna apply it to my eyelids because I know many of you like to just use your concealer not only under your eyes, but also on your eyelids as an eyeshadow primer. And I'm curious if either of these will work, and if so, which one works better? Maybe they both work the same, I don't know. We'll find out together. But that is an option for your concealer, so I thought let's just put that to the test while we're doing our eyes anyway. And once we put these concealers down as an eyeshadow primer, I'm gonna put a cream eyeshadow on half the eyelid and then a powder eyeshadow on half the eyelid. So we are getting a full, experience here today to find out what works best with these two concealers so that you can have different options for how you wear your concealer and know if either of these will work. Let's jump into it. I'm going to start with the NARS on this side and I do have some purple today. We're going to go just a few drops and we're going to go up around the eyelid and into that purple area. And we're gonna go with the Vanish from Hourglass on the other side. Again, these are both doe foot applicators and this allows me to just do the same. I remember from yesterday though on this Hourglass, it sets up a little faster. So those look pretty even. So I'm probably gonna do the Hourglass first because it does set up more quickly than the NARS did. And I think let's do, and we're also gonna apply these with a damp beauty sponge today, just so that we can really get a variety of application techniques and see if there's any difference in how these wear with different applications. So this one covers well, again, the hourglass is that full coverage. And you can see with just a little bit of that on the eyelid, how well that covers that purple area that I had. And again, we gotta work pretty quick with the hourglass. I just, I'm gonna have to do my fingers, you guys. I did my eyelid, for those of you that like a damp beauty sponge, I just feel like I can move it around and get into those fine lines and wrinkles a little bit better. So there's the hourglass side, good full coverage. And see this, NARS is not as stiff, if you will, or set up as the Hourglass, so it does give you a little more time to work with it. If you don't wanna feel like it's drying concrete and you gotta work with it really quick, the NARS does have a leg up when it comes to that setting up time. But they both settle in nicely, and so far they both cover about the same. It's hard to tell that this is a medium coverage versus a full coverage when you look just at the eyelids. So from that perspective, I think they cover relatively equal. Gotta go to the fingertips, guys. I just have to. It's just, I just feel like the warmth from my skin moves it around a little bit better. Now I do see a little bit difference in the coverage from medium to full coverage underneath my eyes, whereas above the eyes, I didn't see that big of a difference. But I am gonna go back in with a little bit more of the NARS because I can still see some discoloration and that is no bueno. So let's go, I can still see a little bit. Well, that'll be a good test. Today we're gonna see how blendable and buildable these are with multiple layers. And if they're ever gonna crease, it would be when there's multiple layers and no setting powder. 
So if these two can hold up to today's wear test, then they are worth every cent of 32 and $36. All right, I think that looks really nice. So if you were to stop here and not want to apply any eyeshadow, then that's a really pretty, just a natural soft look. You could set your lids with powder if you wanted to, especially if you tend to be really oily or if you have hot flashes and things like that that cause you to sweat throughout the day and you wanna keep that eyeshadow or that eyeshadow primer or that concealer right where it is, you could definitely do that. We're not gonna do that today because I do wanna see how these wear with a cream eyeshadow as well as a powder eyeshadow. I'm just gonna take a small angled eyeshadow brush and go in with a little bit of a powder shadow and just go to the outer corners of the eyes. I really just wanna see how these two concealers wear with a powder shadow over them. And we'll just quickly do that on both sides. And blend that in with a big blending brush. I'm gonna leave the inner third of the eyelid without powder, and we're gonna put a little bit of a cream shadow there so that we get an idea for how these wear. If you can use a concealer as an eyelid base or an eyelid primer, that can help justify the cost if you need justification. And for the inner eye, I'm just gonna go with a little bit of cream eyeshadow in this little third corner. This is just a, an old Sicily cream that I picked up real quick out of my makeup drawer for this little experiment today. I've been wearing less and less eyeshadow and I think I'm loving it. I just love a little bit more of a natural or a no makeup makeup look, which requires a little less eyeshadow than some of the brighter colors. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still a time to rock a nice blue or green. It's just few and far between for me. There you have it. We've got a little bit of cream. We've got a little bit of powder on our upper lids. We've got like a lot going on today. So let's hope this is not a big <laughs> epic fail and I'm running around at the store looking crazy. All right, I've already curled my lashes. I'm gonna throw on some eyeliner and be back with you guys with a final look. And we are ready to begin our day two test. As a reminder, no setting powder underneath the eyes. We have these concealers on top of our eyelids as well as more of an eyelid eyeshadow primer with powder on the outer corner and cream on the inner corner. I can tell you from very early, early assessment, early being like 20 minutes, not loving either of them as an eyeshadow primer. Now they don't claim to be an eyeshadow primer, but a concealer is a concealer is a concealer. You should be able to apply it, whether it's under your eyes or over your eyes. And if you're gonna set a setting powder on top of your concealer to set it, that is not unlike adding eyeshadow powder to the top of it, so it should still stay. If it's causing wrinkles on my eyelids, one would think it's going to also cause an appearance or a bolder appearance of wrinkles underneath my eyelids. That's not like underneath my eyelids, under my eyes. That doesn't seem to be the case, but I definitely feel like the eyelids are more wrinkly. So we shall see how the day goes. I'll check in with you guys and we'll take a look. So here we are for our 10 and a half hour check-in. It's been a great day. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait for spring. I love winter. I'm an outdoor snowmobile, snow ski person, but the days are just shorter as it gets darker earlier. So I'm really, really happy that it's starting to stay a little bit lighter, a little bit longer. It's like I get more done. But in this 10 and a half hour wear test, how much did we get done with this concealer? A lot. How did the concealer hold up? Let's take a look. I had some glasses on for a few hours today. I don't see that the frames have wore any lines into that concealer area. Now remember that the NARS is radiant and the Hourglass states to be a natural finish. They both wear fairly matte to me. I don't see much shine at all. Um, I did want a little bit of brightness to last throughout the day. I don't know that I got that. I feel like the NARS has worn off a little bit more than the Hourglass did. I don't feel like either one of them have settled into fine lines and wrinkles. I mean, I'm gonna pull down just so you guys can see if there's any creasing. I see a little bit of creasing on the NARS side, not much for 10 and a half hours with no setting powder. I don't see any creasing on the Hourglass side. So, I, I mean, I'm pretty darn impressed. I don't feel like either side is over wrinkly. So in terms of a long wear, hydrating type, crease resistant 
product, I think they both did meet what they said they can do from a marketing perspective. I think they both held up really nicely in terms of a concealer. If we're just looking at the bottom performance, I would probably go with the Hourglass because it's a little more full coverage and it, so it doesn't require as much product and I think it lasted longer throughout the day both with and without powder. Now let's take a look at how they performed on the eyelids. Remember they don't market themselves as an eyelid primer, but there's no reason they shouldn't work because if you think about it, you're putting that concealer on top of a moisturized eye area and then sometimes setting powder on top. That's not unlike putting them on a hydrated or moisturized eyelid, putting on that concealer and then adding an eyeshadow. It should work exactly the same. And I think to some degree it they did. I mean, my eye shadow is still on in the NARS side. It doesn't really look very cakey where the powder is. The cream looks a little bit more cakey than the powder area of the eyeshadow. That is true on the hourglass side as well. The powder stayed on. It did not crease. The cream eyeshadow in the corner creased and that's on both sides, the NARS and the Hourglass. So in terms of an eyelid primer, it would work fine if you were to put powder eyeshadow on top. I don't know that I would wear a cream eyeshadow on top of either of these two concealers. But if you're not an eyeshadow person at all and you just like to have a more uniformed, consistent tone to your eyes as to the rest of your face, then just a concealer with a little bit of setting powder and you would be good to go for the whole day. You could put a little bit of bronzer just in that crease if you wanted to give more of a no makeup makeup look and create some shadowing. I think you'd be fine if that concealer or that bronzer was a powder. I don't think I would wear these with a cream on top of these concealers. But short of that, you guys, I think they held up nicely. So if I had to choose just one of these two concealers for my go-to holy grail every day, as much as I'm a fan of NARS, and this has been a, a staple of mine for a while, like I fall in and out of love with it. I'm, I'm more impressed right now with this Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Concealer. I just think it offers more of the full coverage that I'm looking for. But again, I've got those darker circles. If you don't need as much coverage and you just need a nice, hydrating concealer that's going to brighten up the eye area, then I think the NARS is just fine. I'm going to have to go with the Hourglass because, again, I need more coverage. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Friday Face Off and get ready because next week we're taking the NARS Radiant Foundation up against the House Labs Lady Gaga. Many of you have been waiting for that, I know, so it is coming next Friday. And then we're gonna go on to some new fun products that I think you're really gonna enjoy. That does it for me. Have a great rest of your day, have a great weekend, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.